Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here doing our examples video for tabular method of integration by parts. First thing you want to do always is to decide that you're doing integration by parts and that it will uh, need to be done a couple of times. So here I'll notice that my polynomial and my trig functions are what I'm choosing for UNDV since P comes before T in Lipit. I know that this will be my choice for U, so that makes this a candidate for the tabular method. Uh, we would have to integrate this by parts a few times as you'll see uh, in order to finish this. So I'll go ahead and remember put U as the top left entry in my table. I could go ahead and pull out the 6 uh, in front of the integral. What I found though is more often than not people forget to then distribute the 6 at the end if they're doing repeated integration by parts or the tabular method. So I'm going to actually leave the 6 in there. Um, we will differentiate this column if you remember that. And then the dv we put in the next column cosine of 2x and we will repeatedly integrate that column. In the last column, remember, we have alternating positive and negative ones, so it always starts with positive one. Let's go ahead and differentiate. That will determine how far down the table we need to go. So power rule three comes out, I'll get 18. Power goes down by one. Power rule again, two comes out, get 36. Power goes down by one, we just get x, and then derivative of that is 36 and derivative of a constant is zero. So I know that I don't really need anything below zero in my table, so I can go ahead and stop once I get there. So some things to remember here, um, if I'm repeatedly integrating, so the antiderivative of cosine is gonna be sine, and since we're taking the antiderivative, reciprocal of two will come out, that'll be one half. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, so I have negative cosine of 2x, and again a one half is going to come out, so that will make a one fourth there. Uh, antiderivative of cosine will be sine again, so we'll have negative still sine of 2x. One half comes out again, so we'll actually have one over eight in that one. And then if I take the antiderivative of sine, I get negative cosine, so this will change back to a positive cosine to x term, another one half comes out and we'll get one over 16 there. I don't need anything below that because that will be diagonally down from zero. So I just go ahead and fill in my plus one, minus one, plus one, etc., until I get down to the last diagonal where I need it. And we go ahead and look diagonally. I'll go ahead and color code these so you can sort of see as we go, hopefully, that these are our terms, each diagonal is a term in our answer. We might need more than one row to answer this, but that's okay. So this times this times this, six times a half times a positive, that will give me three x cubed sine two x for the first term. Uh, the next one, I have a negative here and a negative there, so that's actually gonna be a plus. And then I have 18 times 1 fourth. 18 over 4, if I reduce that, that would be 9 over 2. So I'm going to say plus 9 halves x squared cosine 2x. Next one, my blue diagonal here, so I have a negative and I have a positive here, so that'll be a negative. And then I have 36 and a 1 over 8. So 36 over 8, if I reduce that by 4 each, then we would get another 9 halves. And I have an x and a sine 2x, so x sine 2x. Next diagonal here, I have a negative here, positive here, so this will be negative in this case. 36 over 16, if I multiply those and reduce both by 4, I'll get 9 fourths for this one, so that will be minus 9 over 4 cosine of 2x. And that's our last diagonal. Everything else past that would be zero. All derivatives below that would be zero as well. So we have plus c on the end of that one. And that's our answer for that. Next one here, 4x squared e to the negative 2x. Similar thing here, I have a polynomial. I have an exponential here. So since p comes before e, I would choose this to be my u. And remember, we can use tabular method when we choose u to be a polynomial. So 4x squared, I'm going to keep the 4x as part of that. We're going to differentiate here. We will integrate in the next column our dv, which is e to the negative 2x. 
our plus minus column starts with plus one always. Taking derivatives, we'll get eight x, then we'll get eight, and then we'll get zero. I'll go down to even with zero here. So if I take the antiderivative of this, then the reciprocal of negative two comes out, so that's a negative half. And you can see a pattern each time you're going to get a negative half coming out. So negative half out again would make that positive one fourth out front. Another negative half out front would make that negative one eighth out front. And we know that zero is going to start there, so we don't need to go past that. We'll go ahead and fill in our positive one and negative one terms in the right column. Okay, so we'll go ahead and mark this up. So my first diagonal will be those. My next diagonal will be those, and then I have a third diagonal, which would be that there. Okay, so the first diagonal, I have a negative here, so four times a half, that would be two, and then this is a negative, so I would start with negative two, x squared, e to the negative two x. Next diagonal, eight x times one fourth e to the negative two x times negative one, so I would have a negative, 8 times a fourth would be 2, so negative 2. And then I have an x and an exponential still, so x e to the negative 2x. Next term here, we have this diagonal. I have a negative here, but I have a positive here. So that would be a negative. Um, and 8 times an eighth would be 1, so just negative there, e to the negative 2x. And everything else that is 0, so we know we're finished with tabular method plus c. You could factor out some things if you wanted to go ahead and say this is e to the negative 2x times negative 2x squared minus 2x minus 1 plus c. You could certainly do that either way you like. Okay, hopefully these give you an idea of how to work through tabular method the way that we show it. Good luck with your tabular method and integration by parts. We'll see you in the next video.